Good morning from West St. Lucie. This is Professor Teferro with uh, Lesson 6 of Chinese History Overview. Uh, in our first five lessons, we uh, looked at the uh, ancient civilizations of China and the uh, early dynasties and middle dynasties of China. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we're going to look at the um, development of the uh, Yuan Dynasty which is a big change in Chinese history, approximately uh, 1200 BC or so, uh, 1200 uh, AD or so. Uh, let's look at the uh, circumstances that created the opportunities for the Yuan to take over China and to uh, control China for two or 300 years. Uh, at the time, um, Genghis Khan was uh, developing his power in uh, Northeast Asia and <clears throat> he spread his power across of Asia and even into Europe. Um, this easily engulfed uh, Southern Asia and Southern China and uh, at that point in time uh, Genghis Khan was able to uh, rather easily overcome um, the disorganized uh, Chinese um, uh, Sung dynasty, um, which uh, did not have the money or the power <clears throat> to uh, oppose Genghis Khan. Um, the Mongols took over the uh, Chinese government, so to speak, what, what there was of the government, and made it far, far more efficient than it had been before. Uh, economically, the uh, Mongols were far superior to the Chinese. Uh, they understood uh, intercontinental commerce. Um, they were not xenophobic, uh, as the Song Dynasty was. Uh, they had lots of uh, intercourse with the West, and uh, they made lots and lots of money in trade. They knew how to make money. The Chinese didn't. It's as simple as that. In fact, <clears throat> uh, the Chinese had made a um, terrible mistake with their monetary system by valuing silver more than gold. Uh, this was catastrophic from a trading standpoint. And um, uh, the Mongols had a much better sense of international monetary trade, and they rectified this problem for the Chinese. Um, in addition to taking care of their monetary system, um, the uh, Mongols uh, also developed uh, their own belief system, which was Buddhism, and introduced that into Chinese society as well. It was at this point in time when Buddhism became prominent in uh, China. Uh, since uh, Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan were Buddhists, uh, Buddhism became a very profitable religion to become part of, uh, both as a uh, monetary consideration and as a power consideration uh, within the government. So um, many former Confucianists and Taoists within the uh, Chinese uh, society um, switched their alliance to um, Buddhism. And this is understandable. I mean, one uh, tries to uh, make their personal situations as um, profitable as possible. So a lot of the um, uh, Chinese middle class uh, shifted their views on Confucianism and Taoism. Um, other contributions made by um, the Mongols to um, the Chinese uh, empire uh, was unity. <clears throat> While the uh, Song Dynasty did unify China to a degree, um, no one unified their uh, military and economic forces as well as the Mongols. Uh, they were far more disciplined than the uh, Chinese. The, discipline were, uh, the Chinese just were not disciplined economically, uh, militarily, uh, or even philosophically for that matter. So. Um, 
the Mongols were able to install their belief systems for a couple of hundred years and effectively raised uh, the standard of living for the Chinese during that time period. Um, the Mongols may have brought uh, horror and discord to a few cities or many, several cities actually, uh, in their expansion in their uh, uh, European theater. But in their Asian theater, um, the, um, the results were a little less um, uh, horrifying, so, so to speak. Um, they, were, they were accepted by, uh, reluctantly accepted by the, uh, the Chinese uh, middle class. Now, the Ming Dynasty would eventually replace the Yuan Dynasty and uh, bring back uh, the total Chinese characteristics that had previously been held by uh, Chinese officials in the many dynasties of the past and the many centuries of the past. And uh, Chinese um, tradition, Confucianism, and Taoism would be um, um, reinstituted with the um, the new emergence of the Ming. But that would not be for a couple of hundred years. So during this time, uh, China went through a very necessary uh, transition to uh, improve its economy, um, to uh, open up to the uh, outer world uh, via the uh, trade routes of the uh, Silk Road. Um, all of those innovations were not made by native Chinese. They were made by the Mongols. So uh, these are the major contributions of the Yuan Dynasty, which is often denigrated by um, uh, Sinologists uh, as being a minor dynasty in Chinese history, when in fact, in my estimation, the Mongol Dynasty uh, is a major uh, Chinese dynasty which propelled China into the uh, future of the time. So until next time, uh, this is Professor Teferro from Port St. Lucie, wishing you all a happy and healthy day, and uh, we'll uh, look at the uh, Ming Dynasty next time. Take care.